talk about investigator initiated trials from both perspectives, keeping in mind that investigators, once they take on these responsibilities, they also take on the responsibilities of sponsors, which is sometimes a surprise to them. And as an auditor, I'll tell you that, and you need to be an auditor to know this, of course, that investigators sometimes just struggle with the requirements for investigators. So how do we make sure that investigators appreciate their responsibilities they take on with these investigator initiated studies? We'll talk about who holds the IND or the IDE, and we'll also discuss how sponsors coordinate with investigators for these investigator initiated studies without stepping over the line. And then the regulatory authorities looking at us as circumventing the requirements for an IDE or an IND by using those investigator initiated studies. Investigator initiated trials. We're going to talk about what is an investigator initiated trial, look at the applicable regulations for IITs or IISs, whatever you might call them, including sponsors and investigator responsibilities, as well as manufacturers. So when we go through this, this is really geared towards those investigators, but we'll also talk about what manufacturers can and cannot do, what those limits are. Review the steps involved in initiating IIT with a sponsor or a manufacturer, really, and review regulatory reporting requirements. We'll also talk about essential documentation for a sponsor investigator using the DIA's trial master file reference model. So we have that as attached as a handout. It's a huge Excel spreadsheet, version 3.1, I believe. Identify approaches to minimizing risks associated with investigator initiated trials by avoiding common pitfalls. And we're going to look at some existing warning letters. And there are, unfortunately, they're still coming. So we still see investigator initiated studies. The FDA has had a focus on that and for the last few years. What's of interest is that this year, for fiscal year 2018, the FDA released their findings, their bioresearch monitoring findings, and teased out investigator initiated studies, like how many they had done both here and abroad in terms of classifying those inspections. So we've been told over the last few years that they would be focusing on investigator initiated trials, and they have. So federal regulations for investigator initiated trials. These same rules for the most part apply, as we said, for investigators and for sponsors. So an investigator is going to behave like an investigator, but also pick up a sponsor responsibility. There is no way to circumnavigate this. You are responsible. If you're holding the IND or the IDE, you are the sponsor of that study, whether or not you are the manufacturer of that product. So we look at that too. What is the setup? Is this going to be held by the institution or is it going to be held by the investigator, the sponsor investigator? Are you familiar with the FDA's Compliance Program Guidance Manual, 7348.811? I know some of you are, but how the FDA inspects clinical investigators and sponsor investigators. Give me a green check if you are, please, a red X if not. Okay, we will make sure that we send that along. I will also send along, <laughs> but wait, there's more. I'll also send along the other compliance program guidance manuals that can be of use to you. Um, this is really the FDA's, the FDA's SOP on how they conduct inspections. So we will look at 7348, or I'll send along 7348.810 on how they will inspect sponsors, CROs, and monitors, 7348.809 on how they will inspect IRBs, and 7348.811 on how they will look, as we said, at clinical investigators and sponsor investigators. And I really apologize for my voice. Regulatory authorities define a sponsor investigator as an individual, organization, or institution that assumes responsibility for initiating, conducting, managing, and or financing a trial, a clinical investigation. And so again, we need to understand who is taking on this responsibility, who's that responsible party. So 21 CFR 312, this is the regulations for an IND, for an FDA regulated product. This finds a sponsor investigator as an individual who both initiates and conducts that study and who's under whose immediate direction that product is administered or dispensed. So, of course, as we've mentioned, the requirements of both a sponsor and an investigator need to be followed.
Sponsor investigators must have a thorough understanding of the regulatory requirements for sponsors and investigators. And as a manufacturer, if you're providing material support, whether that be funding or maybe biostats or certainly your investigational product, you need to understand that you are not taking on these sponsor responsibilities. You can't take on these sponsor responsibilities, again, because the FDA doesn't want us to be using these types of studies to circumvent our requirements. They need to understand an IND and an IDE, and what it entails, what goes into that application, what has to be structured to be able to support that type of study.